celebration at Reading Festival is underway this morning after thousands of music fans spent the weekend holiday, the bank holiday weekend at Little John's Farm. Uh, yeah, if you have a look at the pictures, the, the site, we'll show you them in a minute, is covered in abandoned tents, camping equipment and other bits of rubbish. We're joined now by Reading Festival sustainability manager, Lily Robbins, who is uh, leading the clean-up. Uh, Lily, good morning to you. Give us an idea then, because we'll, we'll show some of the pictures. How big a clean-up operation is it? It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty huge. Um, we're coming at it from a couple of different angles this year, um, but it always it always takes time because we want to do it properly. So we have loads of different teams working together this year to actually get the site back to what it was looking like before we arrived. And we can see those aerial pictures now, Lily. I mean, there are I don't want to overestimate, but I can see hundreds of tents. I think what happens to those tents afterwards? I suppose there's an assumption, isn't there, that they might go to a charity somewhere. Is that the case, or do they end up in landfill? In some instances, they do go to charities, yeah. So what we try to do, the ultimate messaging is take your tent home, uh, the best thing that people can do. We do have salvagers come onto the site each year. So uh, for a few days after the festival finishes, they come on and they take what they can for charities, homeless charities, food banks, things like that. So we take off as much as we can. But yeah, unfortunately, the rest does have to be taken off site to a recycling plant. And that goes through an incredibly lengthy process. Um, unfortunately, tents are one of the worst things to try and recycle because there's so many different elements and components to them. What do you so think we have to shred them and break them down to pull all of those bits out and make sure that we're recycling as much of it as possible. Oh, I mean, you're in charge of sustainability there. What do you think of people who just like go to the festival, take a tent, just leave it there? It is, it is really hard. I mean, after a long weekend of partying, I can understand people don't want to, um, but it is, it's, it's heartbreaking to see, especially when, you know, it's, it's an easy fix, really. Even if people aren't wanting to take their tents back home with them, if they at least pack them up reasonably, they can leave them. We have donation points in all of the campsites they can leave stuff at, so it is easier for us to, to take things away. Um, but no, it is, it's a really difficult thing to do, and all we can all we can hope, really, is that we just continue with our messaging and, and build on it year on year. Uh, just get it into people's heads that they, they have to do that. And it doesn't help having cheap, easy-to-buy tents close by, but again, we understand demographic-wise that is what they're going to be buying. So, yeah, really, it's for us, it is just messaging. We have an amazing green team on site who basically work with the punters constantly to uh, spread the message about recycling, about taking their tents home, about how to make less of an impact. Um, and we have them each year and we'll keep building on that to ensure that people can finally get through that they do need to take it back with them. Okay, from the pictures, it looks like it's a, it's a pretty big job trying to convince people to take their tents back. Um, Lily, bearing in mind this is breakfast TV and people might be eating their cornflakes, um, what sort of other things do you find that the morning after a festival? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, probably not for breakfast shows, but, uh, but no, I mean, people do do leave a lot behind. Um, I suppose as one of the good sides of it is that this year we've had a South West Food Collective come on site who are a food collection charity, and they actually have refrigeration trucks as well, which means we're able to do perishable foods, um, as well as non-perishables. So they've actually come on and found huge amounts, and one really lovely thing I've seen this year is, as we've been going around after the festival, it's loads of other uh, members of the teams are getting involved. So members of security team, members of stewards, they've heard that we're doing this food collection for uh, food banks and homeless charities, and they've actually been getting involved as well. So people do leave food behind, um, and it's a lot easier for us to collect. So yeah, that has been one positive, at least this year, that we've been able to collect some of that as well. Um, listen, I'm, I'm best of luck with the ongoing operation. How long is it going to take? Around two weeks, yeah, we've our, we have our waste management team on site, Ryan, has been fantastic. They're going to be on here for a little while longer, um, making sure everything's clear and then doing the final, what we call a fine pick, which is literally going through and checking every single section of the field because we want it to be left exactly as we found it. Um, thank you very much indeed, um, and good luck with getting the message out there as well for next year. Thank you. Thanks so much. Doesn't half make me angry, Litter. I, I, I know there's a lot of people who feel the same way as well. But that message from Lily at the end there, take it, leave it as, as you found it. If you brought it, take it away with you. I don't it's care what you off, are. It's not often I'm speechless, but it's best that I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, that question, what else is left behind? I'm glad. I, I know. Didn't answer it. I know.